Welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to illustrate how to use Excel for building confidence interval for population mean when we have a small sample. That is when we have less than 30 observations. Okay, how do we build small sample confidence interval for population mean? In this example, uh, we have data from uh, 16 tires. Uh, life of 16 tires given in terms of uh, number of miles uh, those tires ran so we have 67,435 that's the life of uh, the first tire in miles we have 65,593 that is the li that is life of the second tire in miles so uh, we have 16 such uh, data points 16, 16 such observations so the sample size in this problem is 16 and we want to build 99% confidence interval for the average mile of a tire randomly chosen tire or we can say that is average mile of all the tires produced by that manufacturer okay so let's go to excel to see how we can build confidence interval for this problem so this is a small sample problem then we have to use a t table okay instead of a z we would be uh, using t okay but uh, excel automatically does the job for us uh, getting the values from t okay let's go to excel and see how we build the confidence interval so i have in the first column the data from 16 tires so the first tire the life of uh, life in terms of miles is 67435 79116 so forth so we have the data of those 16 tires so on the top of the excel if you notice we have uh, different tabs we have to go under the data tab okay on the top you have home insert and so forth we have to uh, go to data tab under data tab there is data analysis so we we have to go under data analysis to do this uh, uh, confidence interval calculation so if you uh, notice we have uh, several tabs uh, and we want to go under uh, data data analysis okay so I'm going to click on data analysis that uh, that brings us to this uh, small pop-up box uh, which has several options and the confidence interval is available inside descriptive statistics so don't let Excel mislead you the confidence interval is uh, really an inferential statistics we are trying we are inferring about the population parameter from the sample okay it is inferential statistics uh, for some reason Excel has on organized the confidence intervals under descriptive statistics okay that's not really descriptive building confidence interval is not descriptive statistics it's really inferential statistics so we choose descriptive statistics because confidence interval is under uh, descriptive statistics in Excel okay then we click on OK and uh, we need to specify the input range where the input data is available for this problem so we click on that arrow and that lets us choose the data where the cells where we have our input data we have the input uh, data the life of tires uh, from a1 to a16 uh, 16 observations after uh, selecting that range i hit enter and we need to specify to Excel where we want our output so I choose the output range that bullet and we have to click this uh, arrow again uh, to specify our output uh, where to start the output so usually I start it like somewhere in the E column but you can start it in any uh, empty cell uh, so that's where the output of uh, the calculations will uh, be starting okay I choose E5 and hit enter and I'm going to ask Excel to uh, provide summary statistics and confidence interval and uh, for this by default uh, Excel has 95% uh, uh, confidence chosen I'm going to change it to 99 I think that's what we want uh, for this problem if we go back to the problem nine we want 99 percent confidence so i'm choosing 99 so after making these choices uh, we uh, we had to click ok 
okay once we click ok we have our output uh, for the confidence interval calculation so the mean or the x bar from those 16 observations 78072 okay uh, sample mean of those 16 tires is 78072 standard error which is standard deviation divided by square root of uh, sample size that is 2726 okay standard deviation sample standard deviation is 10904 and count the number of observations as counted as 16 for us and the excel uh, doesn't give upper limit and lower limit instead of that it gives the confidence level 8033 that is uh, what uh, we have within the brackets in the formula if we go back to the, the formula this t table value times standard deviation divided by square root this within this bracket if we do all these calculation within this bracket that comes out to be 8033 okay excel gives that value so we have to add that value to the sample mean and subtract that value from sample mean to get the lower limit and upper limit which i'm going to do right there so i'm going to say it's lower limit and in another cell I'm going to say upper limit and the lower limit it's the sample mean okay sample mean minus that within bracket value okay that's our lower limit for the confidence interval and the upper limit is the sample mean plus the within bracket value okay that's our upper limit so this is uh, one way of getting the upper limit and lower limit for the confidence interval so in this case we can be sure we can be 99 percent confident that the population mean the average life of all the tires is going to be within 70,038 and 86,105 miles okay so if we take the average of all the tires produced by that manufacturer the average is going to be within that interval and we can be 99 percent confident about that so this is one way of getting the confidence interval some of you might be uh, interested in using the uh, the uh, functions to get uh, the upper limit and lower limit so we already know how to get the mean okay if not if not under data analysis we can get the mean by uh, do uh, by using the function average there is a function average if you do uh, average of the 16 using that function we can get the same value similarly we can get there is a function for counting the data so when we say count this uh, this range of data that will give us the count and we can get the standard deviation by using the function stdev dot yes uh, so i'm going to show those calculations uh, there so average average of those 16 uh, observations okay that gives 78072 and uh, we are ignoring some decimals so that's the same as the value we have there similarly we can get the standard deviation stdev dot yes for sample standard deviation for sample uh, of those data so it's 10904 again same as there and we can use count count to count the number of observations okay when we do that 16 so we get uh, the values so i'm going to use i mean sometimes if you do not have the access to data analysis if you are a mac user you might not have data analysis then you can uh, use functions to build the confidence intro so i'm going to use the functions here uh, to calculate the upper limit and lower limit okay so uh, x bar which is the value is there 78072 or you can get the value from there both are same value so i'm going to uh, choose the value from there sample mean minus then we need to get the t table value we can get the t table value by using the function t dot inv t dot inv with the probability 0 0.005 in the tail for 99% confidence 0 0.005 is in the right tail 
that means the cumulative probability is 1 minus 0 0.005 that's the cumulative pro probabl probability degrees of freedom for this problem we have n is 16 so the degrees of freedom is n minus 1 we have one parameter so degrees of freedom is n minus 1 so it's 15 that's the uh, that that fun that will return the t uh, table value comma uh, not comma multiplied multiplied by standard deviation okay standard deviation is there okay that divided by square root of square root of number of observations 16 square root of 16 okay so that is our standard error square standard deviation divided by square root of uh, number of observations so that should give our uh, lower limit so we can see using functions we still get the same value like we used data analysis the value we got by using data analysis so i'm going to fix the cells so that i can copy paste to get the upper limit so i'm going to put dollar sign in front of the the column names and the cell number uh, so that when i copy paste it doesn't change okay i'm uh, fixing all those cells okay so after doing that i can copy and uh, paste to get the upper limit to get the upper limit i have to change the subtraction to addition so i do that and that should give our upper limit again we can see using functions we get the same value so if you do not have data analysis uh, on your mac you can use uh, excel to get uh, the upper limit and lower limit by explicitly using functions okay so i'm going to stop the video there if you have questions uh, please let me know okay thank you